Hey guys, welcome to episode 64 of Biomast. Uh, it's, uh, we're without Jason again, so hopefully we can stumble through this and, and get it done in a timely manner. But you know, we are glad that you're joining us, either via stream or recording. Uh, so yeah, um, we got a kind of a, a decent sized group of people here today and a, a good lineup of topics. We're going to be touching on a couple of things. We're going to start with some intros, do a CPM update. We have two people running for CPM2 that are here for their interviews. Bait will be taking care of that. Uh, then we're probably going to move into a, a number of things that have been talked about on the forum recently. Some stuff with uh, rate of fire mods, uh, range mods, that sort of thing. Uh, probably talk about the change in the meta between uh, what's been going on with the, the mobility change with the assaults kind of getting a nerf and the lodges and the commandos getting a buff and whatnot. Uh, and that'll probably tie in a bit with maybe a, a brief discussion on current balance between shields and armor tanking. Um, I think a lot of people agree that they're not quite right yet and could probably use some changes. So we'll probably talk about what people think need to happen on that. Uh, and then we're going to move into uh, the update for the 1.3 uh, Trello map that uh, Rattati has posted. There's a few interesting things on there. We'll probably touch on that for a bit. Uh, and then since this is the last episode before the end of, or rather the beginning of voting for the CPM2 election, we might give some time to people if they want to uh, do some specific shout outs for candidates, endorsements, that sort of thing. And then we'll go into our normal shout outs and probably call it a night. So without uh, further ado, let's go into introductions. I'm going to start at the top of the list with Darth Carbonite. Hi, I'm Darth Carbonite, CEO of Random Guns and CPM2 candidate. Fantastic. Denny? Hi, I'm uh, Denny Fleetfoot, uh, Cavell Longstride, a CPM1 member, standing for CPM2, and I'm the CEO of Dust University. And he is very tired because he decided to stay up for uh, our podcast, so we're glad to have you here. Uh, Imp? Uh, I am Imp Smash. I am, I guess, one of the more everyman uh, Dust players uh, sitting in Molan Labe as we kind of muddle through uh, the changes in our core structure. Fantastic. And he's also one of our regular posters on the uh, the blog. He's got his weekly musings, which are always interesting to read, so we appreciate that. Uh, Iowa Bait? Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Iowa Bait. I am a director at the Demonic Cowboys, uh, a writer for the Biomast blog and Twitter ranter currently. <laughs> I've been watching your feed. It's been a little crazy lately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, middle of the list, Sarizo. Hi, I'm Soraya Zell. I'm a member of uh, CPM1, uh, soon soon to be a former member of the CPM, yay, and uh, a co-host here on the show. Awesome. And Zarya? Hi, I'm Zarya. I'm the CEO of Out of Heaven, a CPM2 candidate, and I'm here to find girl Darth. <laughs> awesome. And I'm Pokey Traven from OSG Planetary Operations, obviously a co-host here on Biomast. I write for the blog, though not recently. Uh, and I am also running for CPM too. So, moving along, let's start with the CPM update with Zell. What's going on this week, man? Um, you know, it's it's pretty quiet. Um, you know, we haven't really done much with CCP because they've been. Um, I, I guess uh, Rattati's up in Iceland. Iceland this this week. Um, I think I think Frame is back from yeah. Iceland this week. I can't keep track. They're they're moving around. Yeah, Frame Frame's back from Iceland, and Rattati is over in Iceland for a month. So um, yeah, they're they're uh, you know busy as ever, um, and uh, you know so the only real big thing is you know is last time we met with Ritati, um, we had gone over the uh, 1.3 stuff, and uh, it looks like he's updated the roadmap now, so um, there's a bit more information there. Yeah, I can't imagine at all what he could possibly be doing in Iceland. I mean, I, I can't even fathom what might be going on. I mean, I don't know about you, but you know, just a little tinfoil there. But uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it's like you said, it's it's going probably a little slow. Things are obviously in the move still, so it's going to be hush hush for the time being. But it is uh, refreshing to see the 1.3 update. There's a lot of cool stuff on there, but we'll touch on that later. Uh, so at this point, I'm probably going to hand the the reins over to Bait, who's going to do uh, two of the CPM interviews uh, and just you know, get those in at the last minute here before the election cycle starts. So uh, Bait, take it away. All right, thank you, Pokey. Uh, today on our ever-continuing uh, interview series for our CPM2 candidates. We have Denny, and we have Darth Carbonite. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll do what we did last week, and um, we'll do, I'll ask one question, and then uh, one person will answer, and then the other will answer, and then we'll move on to the next question. So uh, we'll start with Darth. 
who are you, Darth, and uh, what is your play style in the game? Um, I'd just say I'm a normal test player. Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't play vehicles primarily, but I'd like to think that I fill most roles on a regular basis. Outside of the game, just a normal person. Um, nothing too special. All right. And uh, Denny? Uh, well, I'm a Galante loyalist, so uh, I'm pretty much maxed out on all the Galante infantry. Um, I don't really do the vehicles very much because uh, I suck at it. Um, so I'm more infantry, commando, and a little bit of scout work in there. And uh, Denny, when did you uh, when did you start playing Dust? Uh, day one of the closed beta. So that would be the uh, 2013, I think. Yeah, uh, May 2013. And Darth? Uh, January, open beta. All right. Uh, why do you want to become a uh, member of the CPM, uh, Darth? Oh, I mean, the short answer would be that I love dust and I want it to improve however I can or help it to improve however I can. And I think I can bring a lot to the table in terms of experience and insight that can help the game progress. And then why should we uh, reelect you to to the CPM? Uh, well, basically, because after a year of doing it, I've realized that I'm a sadomasochist and I need more pain. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, though, um, it's um, it's been a great deal of fun uh, serving everyone, uh, uh, answering questions and trying to get answers for them. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. And uh, it's just it's just really fun to do. Um, but it's hard work as well. So <laughs> but I enjoy it a lot. Uh, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? Um, what do you bring to the table that could benefit the game during the turn, Denny? Uh, well, a certain amount of experience, I think. Um, I, I uh, understand what it's like for the new players. Um, I speak to them regular in Dust University. Uh, I'm also pretty good at conveying that to uh, the C uh, other members of the CPM and CCP. Uh, my particular game style means that I stick with uh, free suits and the cheap suits, so I know what it's like for a new player um, into the game. Um, although uh, we've actually started going into PC now, it's Dust University with the changes, so it's it's a lot easier for us to do uh, PC than it was before. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's that at the moment. Darth, what are your uh, your strengths and weaknesses? What do you bring to the table uh, to this new CPM? Well, I mean, my weakness is I'm definitely not a spreadsheet wizard like Aeon, um, not much of a number cruncher, but what I lack in technical know-how, I think I make up for in communication skills and just a desire to get the job done. Um, I do a lot of coordinating with corporations and alliances, and I think I have a good handle on how to communicate with the player base. Um, and I think that's something that not only the CPM needs, but CCP as a whole when it comes to player relations. And uh, the burning question that I feel on people's mind with this, uh, with this new CPM uh, cycle will be uh, a port. Um, so Darth, where do you want to see uh, Dust go to? PS4, PC, or somewhere else? Uh, I want it PS4, without a doubt. Um, the jump is just easier for me as a primarily console player. Um, in an ideal world, it would come to both PC and PS4, so everyone would be happy. But if I had to choose only one, it would definitely be PS4. And Danny, what about you? What are your thoughts on this? Uh, in an ideal world, I would prefer it on console as well. Um, but um, having spoken to uh, the devs on Valkyrie and a couple of other devs that I know working on other games, uh, such as H1Z1, I do know that uh, it would be technically a lot easier for them to do PC first and then get the PS4 working. Um, doing it on PC, doing it on PC, uh, PS4 first, um, and then coding it to PC is problematic. Uh, you wouldn't think it, but apparently it is. So uh, in an ideal world, uh, PS4, um, in all reality, I think it's probably going to be PC and then PS4. Interesting. Interesting thoughts from both of you. Not what I expected, um, honestly. Um, so I want you guys to uh, to tell our listeners, give us the long form 
uh, and take as much time as you need. Uh, these ran shorter than I thought. So take as much time as you need and tell us uh, why. Tell the community why they should vote for you. And we'll start with Darth on that one. Yeah, I, I apologize if I'm being short-winded. Um, but honestly, it's just the love of the game and the people. And I would not want to imagine my life without uh, <laughs> Dust or CCP. Um, it means a lot to me at this point. So it'd really be awesome if I could help in some way to further the communi community's relationship with CCP and hopefully see it continue in the future and have the game we love uh, stick around a little longer. And Denny, why should the community vote for you? Vote for you? Give us the long form. Uh, the long form. Um, well, I think that um, I've done a reasonably decent job on CPM1. Uh, and obviously, before I became CPM1, I was running Dust University since day one. Um, the number of players that we've had go through Dust University is something in the region of about six and a half to 8,000 players now uh, since for two years. Um, I do everything I can to ensure that um, the player retention is as high as possible. Um, I do know that uh, the uni has a higher retention rate than the game's background. Um, I have uh, threatened to <laughs> allow them to send all the new players to do uni, but I think uh, we need the tools in place before that happens. Um, so yeah, it's just I would like to continue doing the work I've done, but also um, ensuring that should any port happen during the CPM two period, um, that everyone's uh, footprints in the sand, so to speak, have been preserved. Um, obviously. You can't promise things are going to be exactly the same. We don't know what's going on with that in that regard. But uh, uh, as far as uh, getting the, the essence of what everyone's been doing in Dust carry over to the port, that would be one of my top priorities in CPM2. And uh, I, I, would, I want to be there to ensure that it happens. All right. Well, thank you both uh, for your time. And uh, we encourage everybody listening uh, to the podcast to turn out and 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 fucking vote man voting opens in three days i think so <laughs> get out and vote also yeah, shout out exactly to... vote vote because there's, yes. there's so many good candidates this year uh, oh last, yes last year there was uh, there was some there was some great candidates last year but there wasn't enough because it was the first one and people uh were still feeling the a bit burnt by uh the whole uh project legion uh debacle and the way that was handled um so and, you know, the game's progressing pretty well now. I mean, I, I just noticed today, actually, that uh, we've gone over 3,000 concurrent this evening, uh, which hasn't happened for a little while. So uh, that was quite gratifying when I saw that on uh, EveOffline.net. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so we've gone over 3,000 uh, for the first time in about four months, I think. Just in a single day? No, on the same time. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Awesome. So if we yeah, got 3,000 people voting, then oh, yeah, yes. There's uh, quite a few people that um, – Lee Lu, uh, CCP Lee Lu won't give us numbers, but she says that there's quite a significant uh, large number of people this time that are eligible to vote. Awesome. Well, that's good. Everybody should get out and vote. Um, and with that said, I will pass the reins back over to Pokey. Awesome. No, to me. What? Give me the show. <laughs> or Let me have well. it. Yeah, see, see, Zell is desperate now because he wasn't paying attention to anything that was just happening, and we're commenting in the Skype chat, and then we're harassing him because he calls like himself what? a co-host but doesn't actually what's, pay attention. What's the point of me paying attention when I'm not allowed to say anything? You can you, say stuff. You just get. I'm not supposed to it. say stuff. Say stuff during the interviews. Oh, I oh, yeah, was very right. clear about that. I mean, typically, if you're on a show, you tend to pay attention to what's going on at the show. Yeah, I'm, I'm just paying like attention. <laughs> he's 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 got his ferrets and Darth, just, Darth you know, knows me too well. I, I it's been uh, too long. It it has been too long. I'm in your corp now though, but oh, um, oh I know, I know. <laughs> oh, he's gonna take full advantage of that. Um, oh dear. Wink. <laughs> but uh yeah, Dar Darth knows how well I pay attention during like uh planetary conquest prep, stuff like that. Oh lord. Holy yeah. shit you let That's him a play PC. Uh, not recently, but back in the top men days, he was uh, notorious. Let's put it that way. Oh, oh, okay. Notoriously bad. Notoriously something. Oh, okay, yeah, politically correct is always the best way to go. And he's so polite too. I mean, 
<laughs> you, you can tell it's, it's voting opens in three days. <laughs> Anyways, so we're, we're probably going to move along, guys. Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously, as you guys know, recently uh, there's been a change to some of the mobility stats in a lot of the suits. And in effect, basically, commandos and logistics had a boost to their, their movement speed and uh, assaults had a bit of a decrease. And this was to kind of bring in line uh, a curve between, you know, basically the, the amount of defense a suit had compared to its, its mobility. So uh, it, there were some outliers before, and, and this basically kind of pushed things closer to that line, and it made it a little more even in, in that regard. So now, while that's interesting and all, what's, what's really interesting is more kind of the, uh, the shift in the meta that you see when a change like that happens, because speed is obviously very a, a big deal in, in Dust, particularly when you see it in, in PC. Those, those sort of meta shifts become very more, much more apparent in what's going on. So um, just kind of throwing it out to the room, guys, what have you guys seen in terms of behavioral change of players because of this shift? I know that Cross mentioned a few things, but I kind of want to hear what, what you guys have to say. Omar La, these are viable sprint suits. No, not really. Yes, yes, I will defend it. Um, okay. Um, they're comparatively though, they're not very high on the list of sprint suits. On the four point map though, when you get that three very seconds short, spawn. very short. Like a very short sprint distance, sure. I mean, they're for that. For that edge, maybe, but other than that, I mean, no, it's very situational. It's extremely situational. Crushing my dreams. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Forgive me. Shout out to Camerick. Now it's a party. You, you, you gonna you join us, cat? You gonna do a short little introduction while you're while you're here? I'm a cat. And he has yeah. a scary ass voice. We should give him to host one day. We should let cat host. Silence. <laughs> It'll be great. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like, for me, it's it's certainly, I, I frequent the Lodgy and the, the Commando suit, probably more so than the Commando. So, I mean, in terms of, you know, viability, I've noticed a, a rather big increase um, in terms of, of what I can do. I'm, I don't feel like I have to stay in one spot now. I can actually move around because I've got a little bit more, you know, movement and mobility. And I, I've been playing with the assaults as well, and they don't feel like they're, Gibbed. I mean, it's obviously a bit of a nerf, but they don't feel like I'm I'm hindered by by this change. Now, I know one thing the cross brought up earlier in the, the pre-show, and then he failed to actually show up. Uh, and maybe you guys have seen it more than I have, but he mentioned that there's a lot of people basically armor tanking and then sitting with rail rifles on top of rep hives. And I know this has kind of been a practice, you know, in the past, but has there been an increase in in this behavior overall? Dear God, that's the most annoying thing now. It's almost as annoying as a bolt pistol. I've seen it a lot in pubs. It's awful. I think yeah. there might be a slight increase in it, but it's definitely that's definitely something that has been around. I think the biggest change, like the meta, as far as the meta is gone, um, min assaults with uh, combat rifles and flaylocks aren't necessarily the dumb thing anymore. There's still plenty of them around. It's now it's a gal assault with a rail rifle because you can armor tank the shit out of that and also. You have you have an ar- you know anti armor weapon with the rail rifle there, so you know um, that's the thing I've been seeing as an increasing thing constantly more and more of gal assaults with rail rifles. And I'm almost wondering if that's a symptom of you know in particular the Caldari and the Galente assault bonus is not really feeling like they provide enough of an incentive for you to actually you know, match things. And so you, you start seeing these weird you know, mix mixes of, of suits and, and weapons. And, you know, particularly with the way that armor is right now, it's, it's very appealing, as you said, to, to really armor tank the shit out of something. And then you've got this anti-armor weapon that, you know, has got really good range. And, and especially with the Galente suits, you can actually put on quite a bit of damage with all those high slots and, you know, actually tear stuff up. I mean, so that, that's oh. obviously a pain. <laughs> and I mean, as someone who uses, I, I use a an assault rifle with my um, Galente assault. And yeah, I can definitely feel like I have no chance. I have zero chance against, you know, I run into another Galente assault, but they have a rail rifle. So I am completely fucked. Um, it's definitely the rail rifle more often on that Galente assault. But I guess scrambler rifles... They just melt everything, but that's not new. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that I, just not changed. I have noticed an increase in uh, suits that all suits of all roles that are packing a scrambler rifle 
And as was stated earlier, they'll like, they'll get on top of a building or whatever, and they'll just they'll throw down ammo and they'll throw down um, red pipes. Uh, red pipes, yeah, thank you. And then they'll just they'll sit up there and they'll just mow people down. Um, whether you know, obviously that being with row rifles or scrambler rifles. Um, but real I, men I hug have... you when they kill you, <laughs> and then they get cursed at. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the plus side, when they go camping up on the roof like that, they're pretty good aim for my uh, plasma cannon. So uh, <laughs> they tend they tend to get annoyed when uh, they get wiped out with a plasma cannon. <laughs> well, you guys got to remember that uh, I think range is kind of undervalued a lot. You know, the assault rifle is a good rifle. It's just you're never in its considering the meta. To, well, assault compared rifle. to rail rifles no, and like all those other rifles, it's it's like all right. Uh, yeah, there's not much of a separation in DPS, but a huge separation in effective range, and that's that's exactly. I think why we see that. Yeah, I mean, the me and range. yeah, me and Ritali have been speaking about that quite a bit because uh, I think he's Galante, obviously, with uh, the uh, Ritali officer. Of course, he is. Galante. he is glorious. And um, we, uh, we we basically agreed that um, the AR should be basically short range, but insta death if you get close enough to it. And it's it should only be second to the HMG uh, in terms of its uh, damage output. Well, it's but, very much not in that position. As <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, also. If, you, if you run a breach, I I could oh, you no, could breach, you could do that. Yeah, the breach is reasonable. Dix, the breach is reasonable. Uh, I mean, the, the, the skill, though, because I, I have commander. been I've been running those Aldatech burst uh, assault rifles. Yeah. Like the ones that you get from the um, from the daily missions or whatever. I love getting fifteen of those a day, by the way. But I've been running those as of late, and they are they're very fine. Oh yeah, the TAC AR as well. Uh, honestly, I think a lot of it's just the uh, meta. It's just that there's more uh, HP is tied up into armor than shields, and assault rifles have a have a penalty to armor. If if there was a an even mix of shields well, and armor, I think I assault mean, rifles would be in a good spot. I mean, so if yeah. Uh, if the AR got a, you know, 15% damage buff flat out, you know, the way the assault scrambler rifle got, I mean, I, it, you know, that would make up for that, you know, penalty oh, to God. armor quite yeah, a bit. That, <laughs> yeah, let's put another 15% uh, damage buff so we can nerf them along with scrambler rifles whenever that happens. Is that going to happen? <laughs> I hope so. I, yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if we're going to get any balancing um, uh, for, for the next uh, few weeks or so. Ah, damn, um, I might as well just... Because, uh, we've been, been waiting for months, so it's, you Yeah, know... that, that assault scrambler rifle has been like that since, what, before Warlords, maybe? I think so, yeah. <sighs> I, mean, I think, I think uh, blessing Ritaddy's a little bit bored of doing balance work. He wants something with a bit more meat, <laughs> which is why we've got a... don't really want in, what, more... I mean, See, that's the thing. I don't really want more content. I mean, it's cool. Content's cool, man. I love it. But I don't want more content if you've got a weapon that's clearly overpowered that got this you know 15 or 25 or whatever it was uh percent damage increase before like almost two patches ago uh and everybody's complaining about it and everybody knows it's a problem yet they're not going to do anything about that i just assume fix everything before you roll out the cool shit you do the uncool shit and then you you uh you you suck everybody and be like hey here's this play our game well, I think I think you have to rotate it because a bit because there's a lot of players who are just going to get bored and leave a game if there's not new content coming out. You have to have a a flow of new content. You also have to keep maintenance over the content you have, and that that not just goes to to balance, but uh, it also goes to um, like when you you implement a new feature, you have to go back and then revisit and polish that feature. Um, See, Sal, I honestly thought what you were going going for with that was there, there are going to be people who get bored of this game if they don't have the new flavor of the month thing, the new OP thing to, you know, skill into. <laughs> no, that's 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 just, that's balanced up. Gotta... Well, uh, can I put a tick on that, though, real quick? I mean, yes, we definitely need a rotation of what they work on. Balance is important. Uh, just mechanics uh, are pretty important. And then, uh, about, and then content's important. But uh, a large part of it is, I think, one of the largest things that turns people off of Dust, and I hear this from people that have played Dust and I play with in other games, and that's that you know they ha sometimes they'll come up against a specific weapon or a combination, and they feel like they have no chance. Like they they could play a close range, long range, 
whatever they've got their their outfit loadout gives them really such a disadvantage that they can't really compete with it and that turns a lot of people off that they if they get things a little bit more normalized and so that sure you may be at a disadvantage but or at an advantage depending on which end of the coin you're on then you don't get that feeling of hopelessness and i think that kicks a lot of people off the of dust well speaking on the the topic of a rotation not to backtrack but didn't we just get new content before like well yeah didn't we just get it um last uh last um update or whatever and n there were no nuffs or blah, blah, blah. well no never mind i take that back never mind i just ate my words sorry can i just uh, interject yeah. here as well because uh because obviously as CPM we talk to uh, CCP a lot and uh, I've just had a little message from CCP Frame and obviously the last weekend we had the whole problem with the uh, server dropping out and everything um, so uh, he's just confirmed that there, they, there are plans to reimburse um, faction warfare boosters and what have you the details will be coming shortly but uh, Yes, that's uh, that's going to be happening reasonably soon. So, uh, why are they of, the press for you there? Why are they reimbursing um, FW boosters? Because of the uh, outage from last there week. Was, there was the game was oh, down; people couldn't play. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, are you so, talking about from like just a couple of days ago, or for the the one before that? The one before that, the one from last week, the ones that the Eve players just got an SP refund from. That was cool. uh, last weekend. So obviously the details of um, um, are still being discussed, but they have got plans to reimburse people for uh, anything that they got lost. But uh, obviously we can't give any full details on it because they're still running on it. So, but nothing from the from the you know the most recent server problems. Nothing from that. Uh, I think the ones that we just had weren't too bad. Not compared to last week. Well, last week we were for nearly nearly a day. So. Well, I mean, yeah, I couldn't play for an entire evening, and I mean, yeah, I, it was apparently fixed around the time I went to bed at like three a.m. But I mean, seriously, it's it still had a booster running. I mean, well, my my biggest suggestion is to anyone who has uh, issues where they cannot play when they have a booster active, is file a ticket. And if yeah. there's you know if there's enough absolutely. tickets, they're gonna absolutely they're you know if there's individual tickets and they're like yeah we can see there was something wrong maybe they'll just you know credit you back something individually or if they get like you know droves of tickets then they'll just be then they'll do like a you know a game wide thing or something just if you feel like the you're not getting what you paid for that's file a ticket that's the best way to handle it <laughs> absolutely yeah um, and like I say, instead of just going it's like working in IT whining. Uh, you get a bunch of people in IT who just email you when there's problems or walk by your desk. You're like, file a ticket. Make a ticket. Put it in. Yeah, yeah. like I say. So they're just going on the forums and, you know, I'm saying this should have happened and this should have happened and why hasn't this happened? Just just complain. Just put a little... You know, uh, yeah, you know, be, no, be polite, I, I did, obviously. But, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is that... Um, yeah, never mind. Go on. Uh, just, I don't, want to, I don't want to deviate too far, but yeah, I mean, it's if there's issues, obviously, whining on the forums is not going to be, I shouldn't say whining. I mean, if there's an issue, it, that's a, it's a legitimate concern, but, you know, the best way to handle tech-related problems like that is, is, like Zell said, to actually go through the tech system and file a ticket, because that's what they get popping up on their screen when they, they get there in the morning. You know, they oh, may yeah. not necessarily look at the forums, so. There's actually, oh, no, um, no, absolutely. tickets will get seen, um, the, some of them are handled at, at least partially there's there's like people in iceland that they have like um i don't think i'm this is a problem to say this. there's there's like seriously there's like a board that says you know here's here's the here's how many eve tickets how many dust tickets etc um so that's yeah it, it gets through their system it's there's an official record of it it's very hard to ignore a huge trend of uh, you know tickets. Yeah, absolutely and, and that's the best way to handle that sort of thing so i mean like i said i would encourage you guys use the the, the, the bug and the ticket uh, form on the website it's it's the best way to get your get your point across but uh yeah so i mean good back to topic with the the rifles and whatnot and i think it might be kind of a good segue into uh, uh some chatter on the forums which has been going around particularly about uh potentially moving damage mod slots around or damage modules around to low slots and some rate of fire modules range modules that sort of thing um 
interesting stuff. I personally have a lot of concerns about it. I think it, it, it ties deeply with, you know, kind of that range DPS curve that we were talking about before and how that all interacts. So I know Imp was the one, I believe, that wanted to talk about this. Did you want to kind of give your thoughts to start things off? Uh, uh, yeah, um, to segue into that, there has been a lot of talk about changing the basic structure uh, of moving uh, damage mods from highs to lows. And that topic has popped up on the thor- forums occasionally across, uh, throughout the years. And there's the, the point behind it is that shield tankers, and not unrightfully so, feel like they're at a disadvantage because not only do armor tankers have more health, but they also have more damage. Uh, if they want to go, if you want to go for a pure, just straight up fight, uh, head to head play style, which is important when you get into the nut of defending a base, uh, like when you're in close quarters and whatnot. And they feel like there's a there, there's a unfair disadvantage. That's why you see so many Galente suits dropping their rep highs, running anti armor uh, weapons. That's why rail rifles still perform as well as they do, despite. The round of nerfs they've recently, I wouldn't say recently, but they had before, they're still pretty effective. And I think that's because, uh, you know, the balancing is a backwards. They should probably balance armor and shields before they balance weapons. But that's a separate topic. And yeah, so people are talking about moving uh, damage mods to lows, making a new mod to either put in the low or to put in the high that the damage mod had to vacate, which is a rate of fire increase. Uh, there, there are so many uh, ideas popping around right now. Uh, I, I just want to start off by saying that I don't think that they need to move damage mods to lows. Uh, shield tankers, uh, there are other options. Now, I don't know about the rate of fire. I'm sure everybody has a opinion on that. Um, and there are even other mod ideas going around like accuracy mods or range mods. And uh, people are just talking about adding so many more options and, you know, it's things like that. Well, and I think in particular, you've got a real problem with drop suits where you have a lot of low slot modules and not very high slot modules. I mean, when I run armor t- armor suits, I pretty much always put damage in the high because, I mean, what else am I going to do? I mean, I, I mean, sure, you can throw some, some E-War in there or, you know, a shield mod and if you want to, you know, hybrid tank, God forbid. But I mean, I feel like moving content down from highs to lows is going to just kind of further that problem where you, you're kind of out of options for things to put in your high slots, particularly with, with the armor suits. I pretty much have a standard issue suit by now. One damage mod, one shield mod, one meal steam. Done. All of my suits are like that. They are armor based. Yeah, because I mean, like, what, what else are you going to do with it? There's just not much utility for, for high slots. And then yep. there's this talk of, you know, adding rate of fire mods and putting that, like, in the other kind of slots. So you'd have, you know, for example, damage mods in the low and then, like, a rate of fire in the high. It's like, that's going to cause all kinds of problems because now I guarantee you people will stack those. And you're going to see a massive spike in DPS. Time to kill is going to, you know, just tank. You know, this, this sort of discussion really concerns me because I think that it's going to cause a, a a real heavy shift in the meta that's not going to be good. I mean, we, we've had rampant damage in the past, and they, they finally toned back damage mods because of that, and this is just going to kind of, you know, reverse that problem again. Well, I'd like to add to that. Um, it doesn't actually fix the problem. So currently, right now, uh, armor ta- uh, suits can armor stack and still have decent region under fire, uh, of all things, plus have a damage advantage over shield suits, which would have to sacrifice their tank for damage. Uh, so, I mean, they can get more speed, which is sometimes effective, but in many situations, especially considering how the maps are designed with uh, most of the points being in close quarters, that, that speed's not going to be as helpful as uh, just more flat-out HP. And the, I guess I would say the, the biggest issue with that is that even if you move your damage slots to lows, uh, then you've got the same problem, but now for armor tankers. Armor tankers have everything in their lows now. They really don't have anything to put in their highs, like you mentioned earlier, Pokey. Uh, and then shield tankers are the ones with the HP and the damage, and then uh, armor tankers are just sitting there with HP or damage, much like shield tankers are now. It doesn't fix the problem, it just shifts it from one group of guys to the other group of guys. And that's just not the way to solve a problem. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, this also kind of goes into you know the balance between shields and armor, and I mean, I I know that Rotati likes to maintain that things are fine, but you know, I mean, if you play the game, it's difficult to make the argument that shield performs just as well as armor does. I mean, you can say it's hit and run, but it just doesn't end up working out that way 
in actual gameplay. And I mean, I, I don't know if giving them damage is going to fix the issue because like you said, it just kind of shifts to the other direction where now, you know, one side has a lack of stuff to put in their highs and now shield is, is running, you know, HP and damage. It's, I, I feel like something else needs to happen to make shields feel like it's worth it to a point where, okay, yeah, you can have stacked armor and damage mods, but you know, you could go shields if you want, you know, this and this. And I, I feel like we really haven't, clearly defined exactly what needs to happen or where we want shields to actually perform. I mean, they're kind of in this, oh, well, they're hit and run, they've got better regen, but, you know, there's a lot of, of subtle nuances to how that actually works, and I don't feel like people have actually hammered down exactly what they want to happen. So, I mean, like, from your guys' perspective, I mean, what kind of, what, where do you feel shield is lacking? I mean, what what can change that would make it better, assuming that, you know, these, these damage mods stay as they are, and, and we're trying to actually, you know, kind of counteract that advantage that armor has of having more HP and damage versus what shields need to have. I mean, what, what, what do you guys think? I would say shields lack variety. Yes. Uh, it's When people say hit and run, shields are actually very, very good at that. Just that That's the only thing they do. Armor can do pretty much anything, and that really depends on the armor modules that you use. The one... Sh shit, Kaka. I'm sorry about that. Cat did not mean to interrupt you. I'll bite you. Uh, yeah, you cut out. Yeah, you're still talking. Bite him, do it. No, um, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not doing it right. I only run one suit. I run a Kaldari Commando. Uh, that's a shield-based suit. Everything else is armor. Kaldari Commando. I can tell you, you're it's, probably you're probably uh, doing it wrong because that's basically right. what I do, and it's safe to assume that whatever I'm doing in the game is probably okay. horrifically okay. wrong. Okay, okay. Kaldari because, Commando well, because has I find absolutely it... terrible uh, shield delays. Like, okay, just... okay. Maybe I should skill into Kaldari Assault then, because I find it hard to, and like I said, maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I find it hard to um, uh, to tank shields. Um, like, I think I've got an Energizer, a Damage Mod, and uh, an Extender. Oh, and then the other one, the shield thing that goes on the armor side. I forgot what that's called. Regulator. Regulator. There we go. Regulator. Um, I've got that on there, but it, it just seems like my shields aren't, aren't doing anything, and it's all proto. <laughs> so I, I maybe I am just doing it wrong, like I said, but I I, I do find that it's it's hard to tank shields, it, at least in in uh, the way I'm doing it. All right. Well, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Pokey. I, I I guess what I was what I'm kind of getting at is that even if the shields are really good at hit and run, if that playstyle is not useful enough in enough number of situations, like if you if that's only useful, you know, twenty percent of the time you're going to have a problem because i mean if i if someone says well you can armor tank and be useful 80% of the time or you can shield tank and be useful 20% of the time which one am i going to pick i'm going to go with the armor obviously and, and so i think you're onto something there where you know it, there's just not enough situations where i feel shields would be the ideal choice and i think that 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 ratio of usefulness mm -hmm. in, in a given situation is just way off well, see, that it goes back to, uh, map, I mean, I've said this many times before, uh, map design, a lot of the points are just too enclosed. Uh, and you got to understand, I, I say this from both perspectives. You know, I have traditionally run, I traditionally run an MR assault. Uh, I, I am huge on armor tanking, but I, when I picked up the Sentinel about a year ago, I went into Kaldari Scent, so I, I kind of get the whole how are shields not so good when you're trying to fight out, you know, when you're trying to fight outside of, I, I guess, a wide open plane. And what that comes down to is exactly what Kat just said and what Pokey just said, not just Kat said variety, uh, he said uh, that he's looking for uh, situations where it's good. And the, you got to remember back in the day, back in closed beta, so I'm sure everybody here remembers this and half of our listeners do as well. And that shields were, you know, king. And why was that? Because there was one type of shield and one type of armor. The armor had a huge penalty. 10% uh, 10 uh, penalty. They also had less health and less repairs. Were they, were they only one? No matter how you do the math, shields always came on top. And I right. know that because I did the math. Okay, well, yeah, they're fair enough. So And so there was a huge buff to armor. And I was, you know, again, I'm an Amar, I was super happy about it. We had a variety of mods put in. Feral scale got added. Reactive got added. Uh, armor reps got better. Uh, later, when assaults got more slots, we could put more on. 
And then Shields got a small nerf on top of that. They got a, a delay recharge nerf. And it was a bunch of buffs and then a tiny nerf combined. And then, you know, all the points are in armor territory, I guess you could say, topograph topographically. Topographically? My English is going away. I spend too much time in Japan. Uh, topographically. And so, you know, you want to say how to solve this problem. We don't need to move damage mods to lows. Shields work better at long range. I guess you could say an accuracy mod in the lows. Like, it wouldn't hurt. That's something you could do. I don't know about rate of fire. That's scary because mass drivers and damage mods on a building, uh, no thank you. But you need a variety mm -hmm. of shield mods. You need you need shield, shield mods that have the penalties that armor has that has have extra HP. You need uh you need just more variety in what you can put in your hides. And then even armor suits might find themselves going for like maybe like say Mimitar. Most Mimitars are speed and armor tanked. You could start seeing, you know, Mimitar that are honestly fully shield tanked and that have a lot of speed. I mean what exact changes would you would you suggest? I mean are you looking for like shield mods that have bigger bigger values but then the associated downsides that are more noticeable like like an armor plate would well basically yes like for example take uh shield extender and ferro scale those are the two comparable mods ferro scale has no downside shield extenders have less hp and they have a six percent delay downside like first off, i that, don't, don't think you that. can compare them directly due to the other variables outside like you can just say one has less hp than the other because one also doesn't have self-region one oh. uh, all suits it, have exactly. region. Yeah, shields have region, whereas all, armor doesn't. All armor suits have every suit I, I in the game right now has at least a one. Uh, yeah, you second can't region. really call that region unless you want to wait five minutes. Well, no, I'm not saying it's 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 going to be battle viable, yeah, but, but that's, and, a, that's and the I thing. Understand. That's the thing. It's the higher HP, much, much, much lower inbuilt region compared to slightly lower HP, but much, much, much higher inbuilt region. There's a, that's like that they do balance out to some extent. I'm not, I'm not saying the numbers are necessarily perfect, but yeah, you can't just say that the HP value should be, you know, exactly the same when the region values are so completely different from each other. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that our shield should be as high as armor. I think there should be a disparity. I think armor, again, I'm a Mar, I, I want my armor to have more HP than shields, especially seeing as I'm not going to be as fast or I have to sacrifice HP for speed. You also have don't. to remember that the current plates come with a significant strafe penalty. So in a 1v1 fight, you take more hits. So if we gave shields about an equal ratio but still kept the same speed penalty, it would be kind of disastrous, I would say. No, I'm not. Again, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that you should just uh, just should, making it clear. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that they should be uh, equal on that terms. I'm just saying that the reason why armor has all these options, uh, the reason why armor is better is it has these options. Is Pokey asked me specifically what I would say? I would say that the shield extenders and the ferro scale, which they are, they're they're basically the same thing. Uh, they're not supposed to be the exact same thing, but they are. The, the the base uh, lowest penalty or uh, uh, HP extender for both the armor tanking types, and then there should be uh, a variety. There should be a a heavy shield extender that's still you know 30, 40 HP less than armor, but has like a huge like you know not like six percent but like 20, 25 percent shield de you guys uh, recharge delay might penalty want or something. Want to check out the thread I linked in the channel. It's basically me, Breakin, and Ripley came up with two new shield modules that should do exactly that, to give shields the variety they need. Yeah, no, I've, I've read that thread actually uh, before, and it's stuff like that is what I'm talking about. Those are the changes we need. Just, I don't want to make shields tankier than armor. In fact, I, I really hope they never do. Um, even even my Caldari scent doesn't want that because I play it more, you know, skirmisher than I do like stand and stand and deliver. But there, if we had more variety, if we had those uh, heavy extenders that had a huge shield delay uh, penalty, if we had uh, light shield extenders, the ones that had a lower like at proto level like forty five shield, but they increased your shield delay uh, penalty by a tiny bit. I think that variety would put. Uh, shields up to armor's level 
And then if they change the uh, maps just a little bit, put a few more points outside. If half the points are outside and half the points are inside, then everybody's useful somewhere all the time. Then I think that it would be easier to balance guns. I think we see more variety in armor er, and, and shield HP. Changing maps at this point is not really an option, I would say. No, I know they can't change sockets. I'm, I'm aware. Yeah, so it's we have to balance around what we have. We can't just say, oh, make the maps like that. Yeah, I think you're pretty on par with that, Cat. I mean, obviously, I think there's some some severe problems with the map design, but that's not something that can be changed. I mean, numbers can be changed, but it's not really within the current capability that the team to actually start making fundamental shifts in how maps are designed. And, you know, that that brings about a whole can of worms, which is just a, a real pain to try to fix and balance around. I mean, how do you balance a map to get an intended player, you know, uh, behavior to change? That's That's real tough to do. <laughs> Um, but I am looking at your, your spreadsheet now. This is actually pretty good stuff. Just so I'm, un I'm understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. So basically you're proposing a, a reinforced extender, which is basically a higher HP value for shields, but has a uh, decrease in recharge rate. Yeah. Um, but the same depleted, de same depletion uh, penalty as a normal extender. And then there's a flux extender, which is a lower amount of HP, increases the recharge rate, and then decreases the depletion delay. Is that what I'm reading? Yep. Yeah, that's 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 interesting stuff. Because I mean, basically, the reinforced extender would be your standard armor plate, more or less. I mean, it's it's got a, a bigger penalty opposed to like a ferro scale. And then you've got your flux extender, which would be like a reactive plate, where it's going to be boosting your regen and your your HP at the same time. And that's that's actually pretty legit. I think that's pretty uh, along with with what Imp is saying is that you've got a lot of options for different armor mods. And you, you're really limited with shields. I mean, you've kind of got the the energizers now, which are kind of neat. They're basically super rechargers, but with a penalty to the HP, obviously. I think that's that itself is pretty neat. I actually would kind of like to see something like that for armor. But uh, in terms of shields, I think kind of bringing in kind of that heavy, heavier extender and then something that boosts the regen and the HP at the same time would, would certainly add some, some interesting um, flexibility to the fits. And it might be what you need, because then you can actually... You, you can then stack HP and make more of a siege style fit for shields. Where right now you you really can't. I mean, especially like on the heavier suits, like you'll like the the cal you know like commandos and, and sentinels. You you'll put like an extender on there, but you you typically don't bother because you're just more focused on trying to get that regen back up. And I, I think that you kind of lack an option to, to stack plates like you do like on an armor suit. And I, I think that could go a long way because like i said you know shields are viable in certain situations i mean there is by far a, a a time where you know a skirmish warfare where you're, you're dodging in and out and doing this hit and run tactics that that is viable in certain situations but i think that overall you know a siege hp based fit is going to be more useful in a larger percentage of situations and that's going to be the preference and that's why you're you you see you know a lot more in terms of armor fits because you know like i said if someone says pick armor you'll be useful 80 percent of the time i'm gonna pick armor i mean that's that's just that's just how players are going to play the game so i think that if you um, you know bring in some of those advantages that you know armor has where they can get more hp but still maintain that lower hp higher regen uh feel for the fit you can still you know keep that that the the difference between shields and armor very distinct, but also you know give shields more options than what they can do. So that that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll look at these numbers. I actually have not seen this thread before, so I'll look at the numbers and, and see what I think. But I, I can't you know tear that apart right now. But that is it is cool stuff. I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, and that's the thing though is because exactly uh, what uh, you and Cat mentioned earlier. I, I, to truly fix the issue, you would need map changes. But as y'all said, there are technical limitations. We're simply not going to get. Uh, a lot in the way of map changes, if anything. So at least we can get some parity in options. That would close the gap significantly, at the very least, and you know make Haldari players feel a little bit better, uh, give uh, everybody a little bit more fun with the variety. You won't see so many rail rifles and combat rifles because all of a sudden there's more shields out there. Actually, I still believe they would remain dominant because the range versus DPS curve is uh, completely yeah, yeah, fucked. Yeah. Fair enough. That's true. Yeah. That's very, very true. Yes. And, and that's something I'd probably like to touch on because it's something that, you know, uh, I've been talking with a number of people about. I know Jason and I have talked about this in, in pretty great length, both on and off the air. 
But I mean, I I know Cat has run the numbers before. Um, I myself a while ago basically plugged in the values for you know damage, rate of fire, range, and whatnot for all of the um, assault variant rifles, just because those that exists for all all races. And basically, if I recall, I don't have the spreadsheet in front of me right now, but basically the rail rifle has a seventy percent increase to optimal range over the assault rifle, but only loses seven percent DPS in the process. Process. So you have a 10 to 1 ratio of DPS to range. And I mean, like I said, this kind of comes down to in what percentage of situations are you going to feel useful? I mean, okay, yeah, you're going to have 7% more DPS with an AR, you know, within this range. But of any given percentage of situations where that's going to happen, is it going to be better to have the extra range, that massive increased extra range, knowing you're going to be killing them a little bit faster, or a little bit slower rather? And I think that the amount of times where like an AR is actually useful is just way too small compared to like a rail rifle because that range is really, really powerful. And so you, because you have these big differences in, you know, huge amounts of range compared to, you know, the, the penalty of DPS you're seeing, that's why you see this tendency more towards longer range weapons. You've got the, you know, the scrambler rifles and the rail rifles and, and the combat rifles because they've got the range or the effective range to really make them work despite having less DPS. And I think we really need to take a hard look at what that DPS to range curve needs to be. Cause like you said, it's just, it's totally screwed up. And that's why I was so pissed at the change to the assault scrambler rifle, because Rotati actually had a pretty even curve. I didn't really like the slope on it. I thought that the, the increased range didn't have enough of a decrease in DPS, but it was, it was, you know, a good concept. And then he blew it out of the water by giving it that insane 15% bonus. I mean, I thought it was a typo when it came out because I was like, there's no way he's buffing that by 15%. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, myself, I thought maybe 1.5%, but nope. 15%. Yeah, but that's yeah, no, because crazy. that's because though he wanted to make the assault scram rifle good against armor, which is not its intended role. Uh, again, this all these weapon weird twists comes back to uh, uh, armor versus shields and how much effective HP is tied up into it. And you know the other half of that though, uh, Zarya put this in channel, and the other thing I wanted to mention was that there aren't a lot of shield support tools. Uh, you know, that you have the armor repper, you got the armor repping hives, shield support tools. Yeah, not so much. And you know, we we need those. Like, there needs to be parity. You know, they don't have to function the same. Although I think, as far as reptiles go, they could. They should not function the same. Whether you want to do or not, it's it's. I'm not a logi. It's it's really none of my business. I don't run a shield assault, so that's on you guys to hash that out. The more we can avoid, the more we can avoid making shields and armor similar, the better. So, if we can. Logi tools make them different somehow. Like, like coming back to the map design thing. If I could, I would make it so that shields and armor are completely different. Have only their uh, usage case, but in all the maps have a use for both. But it's clearly you not know, the situation. So, well, and I, I think it totally hit on something, which is why I was kind of irritated with the change. Is that if the meta of the game is leaning more towards armor than the scrambler rifle, which is not going to do well against armor, uh, is obviously going to be underutilized because it's just not going to pack the punch it needs to do. I mean, if, if armor is being used 80% of the time, it, the scrambler rifle is going to struggle that same percentage of time. And so, yeah, I mean, if you're going to buff it to be useful against both, or in this case, useful against armor and melting anything with shields, Sure, but you should you need to balance what kind of you know tanking is being used first before you start trying to make those yes. kinds of changes, and, yeah. and that's why I'm I'm always a fan of of basing you know like that like I said that range DPS curve if you've got a range DPS curve and I mean yes there's obviously some some variation because there's more more variables than that but if you have to buff something fifteen percent above that curve there's another problem and it's not the weapon it's something else. And I think in this case, it's totally the, the amount of, of shields versus armors being, armor being used in, in the game. And Zarya is completely correct. I think a large part of why armor is appealing is that you can you know rep with the repair tool and you can basically stack on as much HP as you want. As long as you've got a buddy there, you don't have to worry about regen really at all. And with shields, it's, you're trying to do the spider really tanking nasty. is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I mean, you see that to great effect in EVE. But again, in EVE, you have shield and armor remote reps. And, you know, they, at least in EVE, they perform 
similar, but they're they're different, obviously, in, in ways I won't get into. But, you know, you have both. And I think the fact that we only have one is, again, another thing that's going to, you know, make armor taking much more appealing. Can I qu- quickly throw a curveball question toward the CPM members related to this topic? I know nothing. You, you got to wake up. And you up. know that's true. Well, ask anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask to the CPMs and the CPM candidates. Uh, they're talking about a shield damage threshold for uh, uh, drop suits. How do y'all feel about the shield damage threshold? I think it's a reasonable um, solution. I think that if someone's at you know 100 meters and pings you with an SMG bullet, it shouldn't stop your regen. I mean, that's that's a little insane. So I mean, having a very very safe and reasonable threshold would kind of prevent that behavior because you don't want to screw somebody because, you know, I spray an SMG in your general direction. So like one thing clips your ankle and now you've got to wait six seconds to get your regen back. That's, that's, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I don't, I, I, I was particularly irked in the, the way that it, when this was applied to vehicles, but that was more because of the fact that it was specifically designed uh, to reduce the amount of people that could, do damage effectively to vehicles rather than the actual concept of, um, yeah, requiring a certain amount of damage to actually trigger that process. Yeah. I'm cool. I actually think as a rule, all weapons, no exception, should be able to stop shield regen at their max effective range because otherwise they're no longer effective. Does that sound fair? Well, it's not. It, they're still effective in that they're doing the three, three or four damage that they were supposed to when they hit you. Yeah, and to clarify, they should still totally do damage. I mean, whatever the damage value is, it should it should. No, hit, no. I, I mean, mean like, it. say seventy meters, which is like assault rifles' max effective range. It should still be able to stop shield, uh, shield region. Yes. No. Well, I mean, what's I? I don't have the number in front of me. I mean, it's like at, six at, damage. I think was the it's initial, it's, 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 right. It's, it's, but I mean, like pitiful. an AR, because effective range is what thirty percent damage. I think that sounds yes. right. So, I mean, what's thirty percent of an AR's bullet? I mean, that's that's still way above six, right? Way above six. It'll be like ten, around ten, something like that. Okay. I think so yeah, I... So, yeah. I mean, I, I think that is pretty fair, though, Cat. I mean, if if it's if you're within effective range, then you should still be able to actually, you know, do enough damage that the person's going to care. And in this case, a shield tanker should care because of their shield stop. But I mean, I, I think they were really poking at an extreme case where. You know, you didn't want like an SMG doing one damage yeah, and yeah. that caused no, them to that, stop. That I'm sure, yeah, it shouldn't stop region. I'm just saying, if the weapon is within effective range, it should be able to stop shield region. That is, yeah, all. yeah, and that's actually like, um, I'm sure Vitari did actually take that into account. That's why the number is low, it is very low, and a lot of people immediately went like on a you know, if you're pointing directly at them and firing, you're gonna do six damage if you're in the range. Six damage times, what's that, 13 for an AR? It's still decent damage over an entire clip. Yeah. 13 per, per second, I mean. What do our CPM uh, candidates feel about this? Be very careful with it. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. On, you fools. Darth, Darth, you go first. Tell, tell us more. You gotta take it slow. I mean, we can't have... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that little giggle from Zarya. Yes. Take it slow. Go on. No, um, <laughs> no wow. I agree with you. I well, okay, sorry. Um, I'm tired. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> six a.m. here. Okay, I so haven't immature. slept either. No rest for the wicked, Zarya. Yeah, indeed. Well, oh, that, that's that's the thing I've been saying about like that's been my feeling about a lot of things going on in Dust for the entire time I've been playing Dust. Changes, um, you know, small changes at a time, but you know, in a way where you can. Where you actually return and like look at the feedback and look at what the what the effect was and then you tweak it in the direction it needs to go rather than massive huge one time changes and then you just leave it there for six months without touching it because we all know how how that ends that's how we have the scrambler you know the assault scrambler rifle where it is right now that's how we got the Kaldari Logi being the worst suit in the game for how long I mean the massive change in either direction is never a good idea. 
So small changes at a time and see, like actually react to the, you know, the effect it has. And then if it, you know, if it's not enough effect, then you, you know, tweak upwards. And if it's too much of an effect, you can tweak downwards. But I mean, there needs to actually be like this kind of back and forth and finding the right number rather than just throwing a dart at a board and going like, we're going to stick with that for the next six months because, you know, we can't be bothered to change it. I don't know. I mean, smaller changes are always better because they're not dramatic and balance. It's not dramatic. It's, you know, a seesaw act. Well, Give us time for feedback, you know, don't, yeah. don't yes. jerk us around. Say, that too. say you have a weapon that's like completely out there, like it destroys everything. No exceptions. The fastest way to find the best position for it is actually to cut it in a decent amount. So it would, be around other weapons and then adjust. It's yeah. not always the best to just incrementally do it. Yeah, but I mean, there's still there's still some sort of a you still have to like take a sensible approach to it because if you cut too much and if you cut in too many ways at once, because there's also a difference between like going, okay, this weapon is really outperforming everything else. Um, do we just cut damage a lot or do we cut damage somewhat and we cut um, you know, magazine size, and then we increase reload, and we, you know, decrease range. Like, there's, you know. So that's what CCP did to the plasma cannon before launch. I think so, but I mean, there's. We remember what the flaylocks were like in, you know, early yes. early PC flaylocks, and then they got the nerf hammer. I mean, they got the nerf hammer. I mean, you know, I don't think it needed to be nerfed that much it was the fact that it was nerfed in so many ways at once each one of those nerves individually wasn't that big of a deal necessarily in the in the long run it was the fact that all of it like you just kind of you know take and hack away at everything about the weapon at once i mean that's once again you know some sort of a middle ground just kind of you know change something and see if it works or you know change a lot of things a little bit at a time but you know don't go I, you know the dramatic changes just in the history of dust the dramatic changes have never really been the best way to go about it never uh, well it's funny you say that sorry because that is exactly what happened to armor and shields when they added the uh, armor options and the shield options and uh, the nerf shields tiny bit actually i'm curious as to what denny has to say about this is he asleep he might, he, asleep. He, he might be is. asleep he's there he's talking very nearly asleep he's getting, yes. he's getting to nod off <laughs> see yeah. denny has an excuse to not be paying attention during the show because it's freaking late there he, he, did, he did finish what he came here for <laughs> i just don't pay attention because i'm bad at life it's quarter past four in the morning just, to, just basically repeat that again. I caught the uh, tail end of it. Okay, so Denny, uh, they're 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 talking about the shield threshold for uh, suits, like there is on uh, vehicles. Uh, currently, they're the number bannering about a six. Uh, do you think that shield uh, threshold uh, to stopping shield regen on suits is a good thing? If the number's okay, like, what's your general opinion on this whole thing? I think, uh, as a general rule, the shield armor balance is not far off getting right now after all the to in and fro that we've had over two years it just needs a few more tweaks i would agree that the shields are less viable than the armor and and i say that as an armor tanker who is absolutely crap at playing the game um so um particularly the breach ars uh, they're great at getting rid of shields but they absolutely suck at getting through armor um so yeah, I, I I don't want them going too mental with it, um, because I I think we're just about there. It only needs a couple of minor tweaks, I think, for the shields. Uh, the but the early point that you made about the lack of variety in the modules, uh, that there the, there is a certain about uh, validity of that. I would I would like to see some sort of resistance module myself for shields. Um, uh, Error. Of, at a cost of uh, some, you know, CPU or something like that. So, but um, yeah, you know, I, I just don't want them going too many. I think they're, they're just within, just within range of getting it right now. 
I'd rather we not introduce resistant, resistance modules right now because it's yet another variable to balance around. So it's right now. No, I can't, of course. I'm just spitballing, but like I say, I don't want them going too crazy for it because I think, like I say, they're not far off getting it right now, uh, getting it completely right now. And then once they get the shields and their defenses up and running, uh, then they can go back to the weapons. Yeah. Well, well, Pokey, it sounds like we've talked this topic out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we'll probably move along. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's this is obviously something that, that I mean, game balance is, is a tricky thing. I think it's a, it's a tough it's a tough call to make because, I mean, you obviously don't want things to sit for too long, but I think we've also seen where uh, changes have been made and the feedback has started to trickle in, but then it's changed again. Like, I think that there is such thing as is not waiting long enough um, after making a change to fix something because then you start kind of yo-yoing around where you've got, you know, okay, well, we nerfed this. Okay, let's buff it. Oh, too much, nerf it. You know, you have to find the, the fine balance between... Uh, you know, the amount of time to wait between changes. And obviously, as, as Zarya was pointing out, as, as, as well as many others, if you have a lot of factors that, that go into something, and I mean, let's let's be honest here. I mean, I, I love doing spreadsheets as much as the next guy, probably more than the next guy, but you cannot quantify every single aspect of a game. You know, it, it's just there's, there's not a way to... to possibly factor in every possible you know nuance of of balance and so you you can base your changes off of math but you can't trust it entirely because you got to take it slow take it carefully and don't make big sweeping changes because even if the numbers line up it probably won't actually work out that way in the field so you know it, it's take the time to get good feedback and then actually make changes that are responsible but you know uh, conservative as well uh, with that said, uh, in terms of features and changes, uh, Rotati has posted the 1.3 roadmap uh, for Warlords 1.3. Uh, and so, interesting stuff. Have, have you guys uh, seen that yet on the Trello board? Yep. Let me pull it up real quick here. Is this the, the 1.3 stuff? Yeah, 1.3 stuff. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Let me pull it up here on, on my phone and I can follow yeah, along. It, yeah, I'll, I'll, well, I'll read off real quick what's I've going on. I've got that stuff bookmarked. Yeah, it's uh, it's good stuff. But basically, for I'm not Warlords too overwhelmed. Point, not too overwhelmed by it. Go it's, on, sorry. It's, it's a small list. Yeah, it's it's a pretty short list. Um, I think there's a bit more to each feature than than some of the other ones. But basically, uh, what I'm seeing is just user experience, fitting and trading. Um, probably, hopefully, making the the trading system a little more secure and you know, as much fun as we've all had with the unsecure trades and all the scamming and people screaming about it. And welcome to New Eden. It would be good to actually have a legitimate trading system that that has a, a confirm on both sides before items are sent and whatnot. Uh, achievements 1.0. I can only imagine that's probably um, kind of like lifetime mission, so to speak, where you know X number of kills throughout your you know your career and whatnot. I think that's that's awesome. Uh, Activate the one booster I... X amount of times. Absolutely, that's <laughs> gonna be them. That is so going to be booster, there. You know? Spend a million orm and get a get an achievement. Uh, they'll just call uh, it the daily achievement. That. Can that be a platinum achievement? Can I get Fully a platinum trophy? Oh, Fully Dude, I upgrade want a platinum your dust. war guard. <laughs> It'd be my first platinum. Oh, Lord. Um, and then there's salvage gameplay, simple crafting. That's huge. I think that's... that. Me, for me personally, I'm an industry guy at heart, so that's that's massive. And then daily missions 2.0. So I'm yeah. hoping daily missions 2.0 means that they're going to actually make the missions and rewards make sense and uh, give us more missions that aren't fucking annoying to do. Maybe. Win 30 Nothing matches, would... get a single militia of a knife. Kill five people, get everything. Yes, yes, that one. That Run 30,000 meters, get a free car. Hey, I need a car. I need See, a that car. makes sense. See, that makes sense. <laughs> Nothing about that makes sense. Like, if you're running, you're like exercising. Then you get a car, you get lazy, and you gain all that weight back. <laughs> then you have to well, run no, again. No, but it, no, no, the point of it is if you've moved, if you run around that much, you clearly needed a car because you would have gotten there faster. Exactly. And you probably deserve it at this point. I deserve it, man. But damn it, I like jogging. Yeah, the so, problem um, with the problem that is with the daily mission, it does actually counts any movement ac uh, around the map, so you don't actually have to be on foot. So you can actually just take a lav and do laps around the map, and that counts. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never no. done that. I swear. 
Never. Oh, Zarya, no, you dirty no, no. cheater. Excuse well, me. I, it's only I, I've, done it <laughs> I, I've done it too, Zarya. I've jumped in my lab, lab, driven around in circles, tried to rogue kill a few peoples because haha, -ha, and then yeah, I got a free car so I could do it again. My gallant asshole doesn't care about this because I can already run it all in a single match. Huh. Well, it depends a little bit on what the you know distance is and what the map is, and you know if there's actually enough things to do to you know if, you know you actually want to just spend half the match running around. I mean, sometimes that's I'm already enough. what I do in just my gallant asshole. Just be a logic. You'd spend time running around the map, or mm, or dying and respawning. <laughs> or anyway, behind the heavy. <sighs> But yeah, I mean, the Daily Missions 2.0, I think there's a lot of um, discomfort with some of those missions. I think that they could certainly have another look mm. at them. Uh, I think the one that not. is the most insane one, I think, is the, the you know, assist with a vehicle turret. Because <laughs> um, the problem with that is, um, well, the great thing about it is that, you know, um, the turret installations count for it as well. However, the problem with it is that it only counts infantry kill assists. So if you help someone kill, a, you know, a turret or another, you know, installation, that doesn't count. If you help someone kill a vehicle, it doesn't count. It only counts vehicle kill assist. But the other things do show up as kill assists on your kill feed as well. So that's just why, like, they're kill assists. Why don't they count? I did not it's know that. You know what's uh, worse? I did not know that. Unlike Zarya. a certain mission. You know what's yeah. worse is the Stavent missions. Activating the instant booster fucking four times in a single day. Well, yeah. Awful. Yeah, that one's, that one's, but that's, that's one of those where like, okay, that's, you either, ha you know, want to spend the RM to do that or you don't. The, you know, that's like, that's nothing to do with game. I don't want any, I don't really like that any of the daily missions have, you know, don't involve playing the game. I think it's silly that you have to buy the daily mission, but I mean, once again, it's one of those things where you know they need to they need to be things for people to spend arm on because they need to sell more arm. I can understand that, even though I don't like it. It's the ones that are you know play the game, but how can we make it more annoying for the people who play the game? Uh, I, like, I like that. I like that. Hacking. Pay, 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 pay for the daily mission. Pay for daily mission. Pay to win. No, I mean, I, getting the daily mission, that's one of those, like, it's not, like, completing that one daily mission, that's not, you know, you're not winning anything, you're getting, you're getting sometimes, a, I get, I basically just get more boxes, I mean, I really don't need more strong boxes, so I'm not gonna, you know, activate instant boosters to get more strong boxes, um, I get 50 from any it. pub I do, so I mean, you know, whatever, I have enough of them. Um, the problem with them is that, you know, when it's like, you need all 10 of 10 completed to get a key. And it's like, ah, uh, it's not really worth, you know, what, 2,000 Aurum to activate Instant Booster five times to get one key. So, no thank you, <laughs> I'm not doing it. Yeah, I mean, in effect, that those missions basically allow you to get more for your Aurum because you're getting an extra bonus on top of what you purchase with the Aurum, which is the, you know, obviously the, mm -hmm. the extra experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I get that. Like, that's fine. You know, you don't have to do it. But like Zarya said, when you have situations where you're basically obligated to do that particular mission to get the daily reward, that's when it gets really annoying. Because it's like, well, you know, I, I feel like because, you know, I got, you know, the RNG rolled me a, you know, instant booster mission. Now I have to do that if I want to get my daily, my daily reward, which is, is very annoying. I mean, I can... I can get that. I, I don't really mind the mission itself, but like you said, when it's required, that's when it, people get pissed off, and I think that's a pretty reasonable reaction. Yeah, I mean, it's generally speaking, um, the fact is that at least, yeah, you can re-roll the missions for more Aurum. Uh, the 100 Aurum for re-rolling is still considerably re less than even activating an instant booster once. So um, that's what my, you know, that's the daily logging Aurum, you know, as long as you don't have to re-roll every day, you know, it's I guess it that kind of balances it out. Now that the, you, we get the daily, you know, we get the Aurum for logging in. That's I think I'm okay with the fact that you basically have to reroll missions every now and then. Oh, yeah. For me, it's basically I have to reroll at least not every day, but you know most days. But still, you know, I just to activate instant boosters. I just refuse to do that. So I I'd rather just reroll. But at least I don't have to pay for it anymore, so it's it's fine. Yeah, 
I, I think the addition of the daily orum reward really does kind of help offset some of that discomfort with with those small orum purchases like the, the re-roll and whatnot. Because, I mean, it is it is a little frustrating when you have zero means to actually counteract that without actually spending money. So I think that that was actually a really amazing thing they did was was adding the, 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 the daily orum. Because, like you said, you can use it for small purchases like the re-roll and whatnot, which you know is nice. I, I almost kind of also wonder because I know I think in the past he mentioned for uh, daily missions stuff that was a little more specific, like get X number of kills with the combat rifle, that sort of thing. Um, can you shine any light on this, Zell, or is this all pretty well NDA'd? I was re- I was reading an article online. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm asking if you can shed any light on what, what what daily missions 2.0 on the roadmap actually means. Um. I know the answer to this question, but I don't think I could share it now. Let me let me rephrase. Is it changing what we currently have or expanding it? Or can you um, not even say that? <laughs> prob- probably both. Probably expanding more than... Prepare for lawyer overwatch. I, I yeah. mean, I, I don't know. I, I've doomed him. <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. I, I expanding, replace, improving. It's it's much the same. I I, I it, there's. I'm, what I'm we trying have to help in you daily get missions it. is just too constrained. There's just not enough there. Um, okay. I mean, I quick, uh, then you got Kazel. Uh, how about this? Are they cons- there are is the 2.0 considering about adding new stuff at all? I I would I would take that as that to be a given. And then would you say that they might be changing some stuff? <laughs> Tin foil. <laughs> Illuminati yeah. confirmed. I'm going to say that every five minutes now. Izzel can feel the, the sniper round, or the sniper uh, laser on his forehead. Um, as much as I hate to, you know, kind of save sell from this, you know, I, I, situation. I, 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 gonna... don't, I don't want to get you in trouble, buddy. I, no, was just I, w- I could... would say, though, like, I, we, we had that whole thing about um, about content and, and balance changes and how you have to, have to you know, do both, and that includes going back to new features that you've already implemented and then, and then you know, improving on them based on, on feedback and, and continuing to develop things. Yeah. I'm, I mean, this is, this, Daily Missions has not really been revisited since it since it was put in the game and it's definitely needed it <laughs> it needs it and and so it's it's been out there there's you know there's data on how it works and now now that they want to put you know more more time into improving it i just um what when you brought up Loki about um the the hints at making the you know adding more daily missions that are much much more specific like the whole you know getting x number of kills with nova knives or whatever um i mean i can see the appeal of that as a type of uh trying to get people to try different things i'm just afraid that that's just gonna lead to it being extremely hard to do your daily missions if you get a really weird set of them and I just don't think they they need to Nova be made knives. unbearably unbearably hard. I'm not saying specifically the Nova knives. I'm I can't, just saying I can't like Nova knife anyone. So no, yeah. I'm just saying if it's you know if you're not like you know if it requires being skilled into specific weapons or specific suits that you're not skilled into, rather whether it's by choice of you know focusing on something completely different or you just don't have the SP to you know have everything yet, you know the fact that you know okay I need to go around killing people with militia nova knives for a daily mission that the reward isn't all that great either, but I just have this OCD and I have to do all my daily missions or I you know break down and cry. I just don't think it's you know necessarily necessary. Fun. And, and one thing I'm concerned about is that I, I really felt this at the last event where, you know, the the requirements for what I needed to do to get the reward were such that I stopped caring about the actual game and I focused just on doing event criteria. Mm-hmm. And you mm-hmm. don't want to see that happen with events where people are doing weird random shit to get their missions done instead of actually you know playing the game. And so I, I can understand but that's- some caution there but that's the thing that's exactly what happens though because you have you have daily missions that are so i mean it's the thing between like you have hack um hack primary objectives versus destroy installations i mean if you are a dropship pilot or even a tanker when do you ever like you don't 
you don't leave your vehicle to hack points. I mean, sometimes you do, and you know, sometimes like I know, you know, hero tankers and PZ going and hacking points, and that's awesome. But I mean, that's generally not what you do, simply because you leaving your vehicle to do something like that is basically you're sacrificing that vehicle, and in most circumstances, a point hack is not worth it for most vehicle pilots. And I mean, it's not even like it's not necessary for them to do that. And you know, why would they do that? And then destroy an installation if you're a if you're you know a scout running around or a lodgy running around you know playing the infantry game and you know taking points or defending points going out of your way to first of all figure out a way to destroy an installation if you don't have if you're not skilled into tanks or you're not skilled into an incubus or you don't have a forge gun i mean it and then you know taking the time of you know leaving the actual gameplay and leaving the stuff you do to actually, you know, help your team win and just ignoring all of that just so you can kill some installations because of a stupid daily mission, that's not fun, that's tedious. And I mean, yeah, no one's obligated to do their daily missions or, you know, all of their daily missions, but when it's an event, it's just kind of like you have to do it to get the reward, but it's so out of your actual gameplay that what you would actually do to, you know, enjoy the game and, you know, help your team win. You're actually working against your team winning by removing yourself from the game to go and hunt down installations. I mean, yeah, it's just just sounds so counterintuitive to me that I just yeah. I don't understand why someone would think that's a great event. I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, and this does kind of go back to what we, we laughed about earlier, is that, you know, I've had matches where, you know, we're, we're not doing well, and that's because four people are doing laps in LAVs to get their, their you know, cover X number of, of meters mission for the day. And so, I mean, even if, you know, you're not obligated to do daily missions, but for those who are and are going to do that, I mean it could you know adversely affect the gameplay experience for other people because now i'm basically fighting a match where i'm down x number of people because they're you know playing mario kart on the, on the map and i i can't blame them for wanting to do that they're rewarded for doing that but at the same time it, it does encourage a style of gameplay that is not actually helpful to the rest of the team and it does cause issues like you said so i mean it's it's something you really have to approach uh, with with a lot of caution in the case that a lot of times, and, and I'll just be honest, I don't feel like winning or losing <laughs> matters that much most of the time in pubs. I enjoy the fact that it changes up the gameplay. It changes up the feel of what I'm doing, even when it's hectic and crazy, because I'm like, oh my god, how do I get these um, these stupid kill assists, and, and how do I get these hacks done, and how do I get all this stuff taken care of? It, it's it's different. It's fun. Well, and, and that's that's very true. I mean, that that is kind of the intention of the daily missions is to change things up and give you different things to work on. But you, at the same time, you don't want to have missions that are so far removed from the gameplay that people remove themselves from the gameplay to go do them. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, that's why I would like the daily missions um, system to be more um, more a question of. You know, don't like just a, like the static list of do all these things is I it because of it comes from a random pool of different types of missions that are geared towards different type of players that leads to, you know, either you just ignore them, which is fine. I mean, that's acceptable, except when you're like me and you're just kind of like, but it's there and it's telling it's it's unfinished. I need to do it. And that's not even counting the fact that, you know, now we have CP and if you're in a PC corp, you know, CP is actually important and you want to make as much of it as possible. And, you know, you know, that's the other drive now, which we didn't have before. So it didn't matter as much before. But now, I mean, if it was more of a do this or do that, like you have options rather than, you know, just this list of you have to do all of these things. Like the event particularly, I mean, if it had been get this and this many hacks or destroy this and this many installations. I mean, that I think would have been much better for the entire player base rather than like, you know, because then, you know, if you are a tanker or if, the, you know, destroying installations is something you do anyway as a forge gunner, you know, on, on the side, um, you could have just kept doing that and playing the game and, you know, focusing on the gameplay and kind of filling the missions while playing rather than, you know, having to go out of your way to just farm for the missions. 
I mean, I just, I just think like the missions should be extra. They shouldn't force you to grind, which is what they do now a lot of the time. They Sorry. force you to grind more. You actually just gave me an idea. It seems to me like you want like a different a different group of options. Like I, I never run vehicles, and then when I get the, or and I never run a scout either. I I never hack points. I'm always defending the guy hacking the point. Or uh, I'm never in a vehicle, so I'm not gonna get vehicle kill assist. I just I can't do them. So it just seems to me like maybe if they put a an algorithm in that changed uh, what you're going to get the possible. Um, list of daily missions based on what your statistics show like if you're a vehicle guy or and you play a lot of vehicles then you're going to get more vehicle related uh daily missions or if you're an infantry person you get more infantry related persons or you know if you hack a lot of points do a lot of support stuff things like that if, if it kind of tailored it to each player just you know somewhat it, it might make it a little bit less grindy and a little bit more like you know, hey, this is your ballywhack. You know, go go nuts. I think people would would definitely not complain about that. Well, another way you could approach it is you have a larger list of possible missions you could do, but you can only get credit for you know ten of them. So the the amount of you know CP and the amount of rewards you could you could obtain uh, would be the same as it is now, but it would allow you to have some more flexibility in in picking which ones you actually want to work on, rather than these are the ten you have to do these ten to get the reward. But instead, maybe give like 20 missions. And that way, you can kind of tailor which ones you want to do based on your play style. So, I mean, if you you know, don't do vehicles, you aren't forced to do vehicle kill assist, you can just select a different one. And I, I guess I suppose that is kind of what the reroll is, but at the same time, it might be worth kind of loosening up that restrict, restriction a bit and, and giving people more options to choose from. And I mean, Pokey, I mean, I know, like, I think a lot of people are starting to catch how bad my luck is when it comes to anything rng related but i mean the reroll isn't even like you know you get to get you know a completely different mission for me it's generally speaking i reroll i get the same mission just a different number so yeah. i mean yeah. that's you know reroll is no guarantee that you're going to get a different mission that's the problem with the reroll it's still going to be random yeah, and I, I think that definitely tweaking some of that would go a long way. And, and maybe, like I said, offering up some more flexibility in what you can actually do so you don't feel as obligated to re-roll constantly. And even if you do, you don't get the same thing with just, you know, in some cases you re-roll and get the same mission, but it's actually harder to do, um, as I know you've you've uh, complained about in the past. So that's obviously something you want to avoid. Yes. Um. Let's just move along real quick. I don't want to spend too much more time uh, on, on the 1.3 stuff, but I mean, uh, crafting. I mean, that's that's obviously something that you know is extremely important in Eve. Um, probably will not be to the same extent in Dust, but it's something, something that interests me. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on crafting? What sort of features would you want to see for a simple crafting system, mind you? I mean, not. I mean, there's the, you can go to the moon with all kinds of ideas. But I mean, what kind of simple stuff would you like to see in terms of features for something rolling out in 1.3? weapons i would like to be able to craft weapons and not have to uh sit and farm my war barge every day for six weapons or whatever um so if we could like craft uh i guess advanced and up with you know x x amount of parts to to craft you know this uh we use an assault rifle uh for an example use x amount of parts to create this advanced assault rifle and then if you wanted um like a like a tat assault rifle you could do um the you could you could do a, a few more components um to to do that um and then obviously charge out the wazoo as far as the mangled coil assemblies and heat shields and whatever that shit is uh for officer tier stuff or whatever modules would be I cool too actually think the mm, the best part about crafting would be actually having a use to weapons you just like, don't use anymore, like militia and standard stuff. Mm -hmm, yeah. Craft but it then, up to better gear. But then would using that... Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, you could do that and basically upgrade the militia stuff. I, it, is yeah. that what you're saying? Okay, yeah. You could do that. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. Because, I mean, like, you, you, you get that stuff in Salvage where it's, <clears throat> you know, it's a militia combat rifle. It's like, I'm not going to use that, you know? So if you can... 
use salvage as you collect, you know, broken uh, magazines and whatnot to actually upgrade that and, and push it up a couple tiers. I think that would be a, a real good way to kind of remove some of the redundancy of, mm-hmm. okay, I'm just yeah. going to sell this crap and then I'm going to use the money to buy something else. It makes it a little more interesting. Or just also, assemble it into parts. That would be pretty cool too. Yeah. Oh, yes, sure. that would be nice. Yeah, this is also very helpful if when trading first world around, your core mates decide to be dicks and send you 2,000 standard assault rifles. Um, so <laughs> That's awesome. I, yeah, yeah, shout out to them for doing that. So I've got, I've got a bunch of assault rifles that I'm just burning through. I would love to be able to do something with those in the masses. Here's other than an selling idea. Them. Tell me an idea. Instead of just straight up getting weapons from the weapons lab, you get components that are actually functioning components, not salvage components, that you combine with the salvage ones and a low tier weapon to create higher tier weapons. The weapons lab will give you the components needed for high tier high tier weapons like Oh, officer. so in so instead of it giving you instead of the weapons lab giving you officer weapons, they give you weapon components? Yes. And uh-huh. that would mean that to get your officer weapon you'd actually have to you know, also get I like that. other stuff. You can't just sit and farm officer weapons by logging yeah, in. I like that a lot. And it wouldn't cost anything it wouldn't cost any war barge components to uh uh to claim those uh mm, to to claim those those weapon parts. Because at this point I, I I'm done trying to upgrade shit on my war barge. I'm I, I'm done with that. It it is annoying. So I think yeah, that's actually not a bad idea. CCP, please. Well, and that's actually a beef I had with the War Barge uh, lab initially. So I, was, I was very excited because I thought, oh, cool, I can finally you know use this lab to make weapons. And then it was kind of this RNG, you get what you get sort of thing. And I, I mm-hmm. hate that. I don't like the idea that I have the spaceship that I'm feeding these components and I can't even control what it's making. Like, not only is this annoying, but it doesn't even make sense that you'd have this <laughs> the system on your ship that that's making stuff that you don't even know what it's going to be when it's done. Well, I mean, why wouldn't ridiculous. you want a slot machine on your, in the, you know, that's true. spaceship? It's, it's a it's a borderland slot machine, is what it is. <laughs> in, the, in in the demonic cowboys, we like to call that CCP logic. It's it's praying to our hey, Jesus all day engineers, long. Engineers, <laughs> I'm giving you this amount of components. You guys going to give me officer weapons when I'm back, Kaden? Okay, and then kinda... later you come back and you get advanced. You get officer suits instead of officer yeah. weapons. I'm, just, I'm kind of offended by you calling that logic. Just saying. <laughs> CCP <laughs> logic. It doesn't have to make sense. Exactly. See, Pokey's catching on already. Like, I got it. I got it. Yeah, thank you. So, so, so basically, you have a bunch of devs sitting in the experimental lab, and they go, "Well, you want A, but we think you're going to like B and C, so you get those instead." Even though it's you're going not to skilled look fabulous into B. on you. It's like, I, I don't want that. Like, nope, nope. You don't get A. We, we, we might let you. Convert B and C to A at some point, maybe for more components. But you, you get B and C for now. No, I, 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 I hate the experimental lab. I think it's stupid. But I so can't I think, use C and B. Exactly, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I think Kat's on to a good point that that might be kind of cool to to have the experimental experimental lab produce components that are used to make the weapons that it would normally you know produce that, that would make it a little more interactive i mean when it comes down to me yes you could just sell stuff use the isk to buy it you know probably in a lower efficiency but i mean part of what eve makes eve eve is you know having industry and having trading components and in gathering things and i mean it also opens up you know hey i have this component i need these do you want to trade for them and it, it does add a level of depth to the economy which i mean is kind of the end goal we want to make it so people are actually interacting and you see the flow of resources and whatnot happening so well I mean, uh, the main reason i thought of this idea is because i don't want people to just log in get officer weapons get out i want them to actually work for it because you know it's officer weapons yeah, I mean, you, you want to, especially, I mean, Kane Sparrow will, will, can, can go on a rant about this, but I mean, the, especially when you have... Oh, he has. The yeah, Kane, being... Kane Sparrow doesn't rant. He doesn't, he doesn't no, complain no, about anything. He doesn't have any concerns. He just, he just enjoys the game. Mm-hmm. 
yeah, no, I mean, yes. he, he, he hates the, the passive generation of Warbarge components. I'm really not a fan of it. I mean, it's, it's had some improvements by making it more active based where you can actually get them from, uh, mission rewards and from playing the game. But uh... the, the ability to, I know, I know it's not that great, but I mean, the ability to basically just have this thing cook and produce things and you don't even have to do anything aside from log in and hit one button is really not good. So, hey, three buttons. Uh, okay, three buttons, but yeah, I mean that, that's that's something that's just not it's not good design. It's what led PC 1.0 to ruin. Just passive generation is bad, and we need to get away from it. But that's an entirely different topic. Um, we're we're getting kind of kind of long in the time here, guys. So we're actually going to move into uh, very briefly. I know that Zell wanted to to do his endorsement list for the CPM two election, which again is starting in three days. So. Make sure you're paying attention to vote. If anyone else wants to go after Zell and, and do any shout-outs for specific candidates they want to endorse, that's fine. But we'll probably move into that, get that done, and then after that we'll do uh, we'll do shout-outs. So, uh, Zell, go ahead. Okay. So, um, just just to recap, though, is uh, so I, I did this during uh, the CPM1 election, and I picked seven people. And uh, five of those people were, in fact, selected. And my list was... Um, the second most common way that people voted during CPM1. The most common way was actually to vote just for judge, and we all saw how that worked out. So everyone should just vote my ballot. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, no, in honesty, based on uh, my experience as a um, as a CPM1 and having um, uh, knowing a lot of the different people in the community, I've tried to put together a list of this is who I'm going to vote for and. Uh, people that I would at least recommend that you strongly consider. Check them out. Check out their, their uh, you know, uh, articles on Biomast if they have them, um, their, their official campaign threads on the forums, um, and just uh, give, give these people a moment of your time and uh, decide if, you, if, if they're worth, worth a spot on your ballot. And uh, if you want to reorder my list to kind of, you know, do with your priorities, that's fine. Um, but uh, these, these, this is how I'm voting. I may actually reorder it myself though in the next few days because it's really, really hard to do this because we actually have like a lot of really cool candidates this year, um, and it was it was very hard for me to decide where to put people, and I'm not entirely confident in it as it is. Um, but uh, so my my top choice is uh, our very own uh, Pokey Draven, who I feel was horribly snubbed uh, last year by not getting a seat and. Uh, I have put him at the top because I absolutely want to see him get his his spot and his his day to uh, do this. Um, he's been a huge huge provider of feedback and and thoughts and and contribution on the forums. He's inc- he's an incredibly great person. You listen to the show. No, I'm I'm done. You you know you know him. Vote for him. Um, the second person on my list is uh, Cross a Two. Um, I hopefully I don't need to explain why, but uh, he is. Uh, one of one of our our greatest assets on CPM one. Um, he was always the person that I would go and run to if I I didn't feel like I was communicating properly with people, which happens a lot because I'm me. Um, the big thing that I want to note on Cross is a lot of people may think that it's a guarantee shoe in that they, that he gets a seat, and um, that is not a good assumption if everyone else also makes that assumption. So just put him near the top of your list. Make sure he's up there. Put him on the top if you feel so inclined. If he, as long as he gets a seat, then your vote will will slide down and count towards the next person. So just just make sure not to the, to keep him with us. I think incumbents in CPM one. It's it's important for people who have gone through the experience of CPM to help guide the next CPM. And I I think Cross is um, absolutely the the best person to do that. Um. The uh, the third person I have on my list is uh, Darth Carbonite, who is in here uh, this week. Um, it, it's it's kind of hard be- to uh, explain because some people haven't seen him as much. He's not a big forum person, um, but uh, I've played with him extensively. Um, he is uh, he is a leader. He's he loves the game. Um, he's extremely good at every role that he touches. Which so he he has a, a, a fairly good perspective from a technical balance standpoint. Um, uh, you've seen him a bit here. Uh, Zarya loves his voice. I I would say I do too, but that would sound weird. But um, so uh, I absolutely recommend Darth, and he has a great uh, forum thread that he's put together um, that you can read about him in a in a uh, condensed fashion. Um, 
you know, this is really weird because no one else is even commenting on this as I'm talking, and I, I am I still here? Is everyone yeah, still no, here? here? Just still here? Okay. you. <laughs> yeah. I'm it's really I'm awkward. Here. I'm sorry. I, 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 just, know, I, just... I know you're, I know you're confused, oh. but people actually don't interrupt each other like you do. All right. Okay, All right. go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, my, my fourth choice is uh, uh, Breaking Stuff, and uh, Breaking Stuff needs, needs to be on your list. Um, he and I do not always agree. Uh, we've gotten into some wonderful arguments on on uh, the Skype, uh, but uh, you know so, something about you know vehicle balance, etc. Um, but uh, breaking is first and foremost, you must have a goon on any council involved with CCP, and he is a proper goon. Um, I was kind of like I I kind of tried to fill the shoes a bit, but I'm not really a goon, so. It didn't really work perfectly. But you've got you you got to put Breakin on there. Um, he writes fantastic threads. He does a lot of research into uh, what he does with the game. Um, his feedback is invaluable. He he absolutely deserves to be a seat on here. Uh, the uh, fifth choice on my list is uh, Denny, um, who's also here with us, but probably asleep. Um, uh, he goes by Kevil Longstride on uh, Dust and what his ballot will be. So Kevil Longstride is Denny. Um, Denny was one of, one of another one of those people on our CPM that I just felt was the most valuable uh, tools that we had. Um, and and I sometimes I think he's a bit of a fanboy. You'll see it if you see him posting. He, he just fanboys a little. Um, he likes Apple stuff, which is really weird. Um, but the thing is, is CCP loves communicating with Denny. And, and and he just he, he speaks he gets through to CCP in a way that um, I don't I don't know if anyone else can so um, and I'm gonna st- I need to remember to call him Kevil so you associate that on the the ballot but um, he gets through to CCP and he helps us do our job as a council that we can get information back and forth out of out of and into CCP um, he was really like you should have seen him at FanFest he was like by a dev's side all the time and he just had this this great rapport i think with uh with hilmar who's the ceo and i i just i felt that that value was something that that's very very difficult to replace um i i really feel that he's he absolutely filled his seat well um and uh, so he's on my recommendation list um I also have uh, also with us in the channel today is uh i'm giving uh zarya a spot on my ballot as well. Um, yeah, Zarya, yeah, is Zarya is fantastic. Um, I, I I don't know. I need to if I really need to say more than that. But um, Zarya has a lot of good thoughts, and you can just like re- rewind this episode back to the beginning and start listening again if you disagree, and then you'll agree. Um, so yes, vote vote for Zarya as well. And um, Okay, I, I I'm not paying enough attention to the side comments here on on, on Mumble, and I, I feel like I'm no, missing it's distracting. something. <laughs> um, and the final seat I'm giving to uh, uh, Ripley Riley in my ballot, and um, so, sometimes it's it's odd because there are there are days that that Ripley feels like almost like a, a light version of Bam Havoc, just slightly like he he is like really really thin tin foil. Not like the sort of tinfoil that's like scary and terrifying, but just 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 a little bit of tinfoil. But you can see when you talk to him that he has a very very strong understanding of, of when you when you provide that informa- that context for what he's seeing. Um, but the the thing is is Ripley is very much like another person that I actually uh, truly adore on the forums, which is um, uh, Jadik Manaheim, and I think that both Jadik and Ripley have a have this. Um, they really love not, not as specifically about the game, but so much the community. Um, Ripley is a is a center post of our forum community, and uh, for for the role that he plays in that, I I I, I love it dearly, and I think that uh, the way that he approaches things is something that would be very very valuable on on the CPM. As a note for Ripley, he's just a really good shit poster. He, he is, and you need that. You absolutely need that, and and it's just a, uh, yes. He he's a smart cookie. He just likes to play dumb. He he is. He, he you know, and and sometimes you you need you need just that that way of approaching things, and I I really think that uh, he absolutely is is worth it. Um, he, he can be a bit of a troll, and sometimes you need just a little bit of a troll. Awesome. 
Well, I appreciate that, Zell. It's uh, it's good to have your support, and I'm glad you got that out there for everyone to hear. Um, did anyone else want to do an endorsement before we move into Shadows and real quick? Just as, as oh. a last-minute sidebar, I will write this up. I, there will be a blog post with a, hopefully some manner of extended thought, um, but that's the list. This is my announcement of that list. So, Awesome. Okay. Anyone else before we move into shoutouts? Vote for me. Can't work. He is the cat overlord. If you don't vote for him, there probably will be sacrifices and other things. Retribution and yeah. reckoning. Okay. Uh, anyone else or shoutouts? Uh, actually, I want to make a comment on that. Uh, Zara, or Zell mentioned this earlier. Um, he put Breakin in the middle of his list, and let me tell you something. I, I hate that guy. I really do. He's egotistical. <laughs> he's myopic. He, he's a huge problem as a person. However, and I, this is why he should be on a ballot. I, I would endorse him as well, simply because despite the fact that he's his head is so far up his own ass, he doesn't even remember what anything else smells like. He is massively intelligent, does do his research. He does not only do all the math, but he does it in context of the game. And then even when he doesn't agree with you, or if he does agree with you, it doesn't matter. No matter what, he always takes things you, you said in other uh, threads and puts them in other threads and mentions them. He's like, well, and then, you know, he'll say, yeah, well, people have also said this, so this is another spot. So as, as, as much as I dislike that guy, uh, I think that he would be a, an excellent CPM. I would like to endorse uh, Kane Sparrow for the number one slot of CPM. That's Kane. Yes, yeah. I, I forgot there. There needs to be an eighth slot just so you can vote for Kane. He's not. He's not actually running. But if you vote yeah. for oh, him oh, anyways, no, he on. is running. Stop Kane is that totally lie. running. Stop spreading he's Kane in my number one slot. I mean, come Darth, on, Darth. Darth is Kane running? Yes, yeah, stop spreading oh, he, that lie. He running. is running. Hey, thank and you. if thank Darth you. said it, it's true. Yes. Yes. Kane Sparrow, Kane Sp- you, you heard it here first on Biomass, people. Kane Sparrow, CPM2, vote in three days. Yes. You know, just, just vote for Kane. Right, I, I, mean, I, I caught up Kane, on the sidebar you're pretty much, That's you're pretty much Fuck good. everybody else. <laughs> vote for okay, Kane. Guys. Let's, let's move into shoutouts real quick. I gotta get going here. So let's start at the top. Vote for Kane or Cat Kane. Right, yes. Okay. Cat Merc, shout out. Go, man. I have no idea. Oh, good lord. Okay, we'll start at the bottom then, Zarya. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's just me. Oh, I thought I had guys. a moment. You're killing me. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You, you I'll can't take, all go Zell on me. Come on. I will take one for the team, okay? You named, I, you picked a character name that starts with a Z. What do you expect? Um, shush. Not this. Shush. Anyway, um, back on track. Um, I want to give a shout out to, um, all my lovely people in Outer Heaven because, you know, um, they've um they're some of the people i play this game for still after way too long and um shout out to my man pokey for you know managing to stay somewhat sober during this show yes yes it, it's it's really hard like i don't know how jason isn't drunk off his ass every single episode because it's it's stressful all right uh zell uh i'm i'm gonna give my shout outs to um Everyone who's running this year, um, I'm I'm really I, I really am thrilled um, that there are such great candidates that I do have a serious difficulty figuring out um, how to order them and having this question about where I'm second guessing the, the different reasons that I choose them and where that place should place them on my ballot. Um, I I'm really looking forward to it. I, I'm really excited to see where uh, CPM two goes. Awesome. All right, bait. I'd like to give my shout out to the wonderful, wonderful people at the Demonic Cowboys. I love you guys so much. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out uh, to Netflix for having Malcolm in the Middle on their uh, on their their queue. I've been watching that as of as of late. Very, very entertaining blast from the past. Sounds good, man. All right, Imp. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to former or soon to be former CPM members. End of an era. Great job, fellas. Y'all were incredible, uh, with the exception of Judge. Thank you. There's not Thank a you single so one of you guys I felt really didn't do it. And I also want to give a shout out to the country of Japan for not having open container laws because it is summer, it is sunny outside, and I can walk around drinking a beer in the park or on the street, and the cops will just, instead of stopping me and citing me, they'll stop me and say, hey, where can I get that beer? It looks tasty. 
<laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. All right, Denny, are you still awake, man? No. I think he's gone. Well, thank he's, you, Denny, for gone. showing up. I know he's, he's, it's the latest shit there. So Shout thanks, out to man. Denny for being a trooper. Right, right. There you go. All right, Darth. Like Carver, every man. time he has to show up for like something like this or, or a CCP okay. meeting, meeting you at these guys hours, realize, awful. you guys realize that it's, Two hours later for me and Catmurk than it is for Denny. Well, and shout out to you too, Zarya and Catmurk. Do you want a cookie? Yes, I yes. do so, actually so, okay. want a cookie. <laughs> we will, we will, we will get you gone. a cookie. You, you... Insomniacs don't count. Ooh. Shush, don't bring, um, don't okay. bring facts into this. Okay, did, so okay, did, guys. Out of curiosity, is it, if it's later for you, do you actually stay up later or do you just get up earlier? Um, I've, been, I've stayed up. I haven't been to bed since um, yesterday. Insomniacs don't this count. This is what sickness looks like. All right. I, I will, I will give you my sympathy there. Go to bed. Get Zell, some sleep. Zell, Zell, Zell. Darth, go before they cut um, off again. Okay, yeah. I'll just give my shout out to um, the community, to Cookies, to <laughs> you guys for bearing with me. And uh, thanks for inviting me on the podcast. I'm glad to have you, man. You should come back again. Squee. All right. All right. Cat, are you ready now? You good to go? Maybe. Oh, but good lord. <laughs> drum roll, please. You need a whole drum roll. Yes. It's hard to drum roll when you yes. push it. This, this is <laughs> better be impressive. Meow. Okay, okay. So we're we're just. I, I, son of a. <laughs> I'm done. So good. We're done. So I'm good. not drinking enough. Okay. I <laughs> okay, Lord. Down. Okay, guys. My. Wait, uh, no, on a more serious note, shout out to Zarya because, come on, Zell. You like. You kissed everyone's ass, but for her, you just said, like, all right, she's cool. Vote for her. Because everyone on, knows dude. why they should vote for Zarya already. She needs no explanation. It really is. And it's, I, it's it really, I just, like, this whole thing was really weird to go through it. I'm like, I want to do this on the show. And then I'm like, good God, everyone's being silent. No, oh, no, no. It's... I expected, like, I expected, like, some commentary, some heckling, whatever going through it. And it's just, like dead silence. Yeah, it was we weird. were doing that heckling in, in the text chat. I know, and Zell, that was entertaining, Zell, and Zell, I was Zell, missing interrupt. it because I was talking. Zell, we value your opinion, and so we didn't want to interrupt the words of wisdom. <laughs> That's, I don't, don't do that. Value your opinion? Okay. I cannot do that. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't act like you do. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, so for me, just shout out to everyone um, involved with this election cycle. Um, the candidates and, of course, the people over here on Biomass who've been handling all of this. I'm looking at Jason and Bate, they've both been awesome and keeping the show on track and doing interviews and whatnot. And Frizzell for making sure all the blog stuff is is updated and you know getting the, those interviews out there. So, you know, it's it's been a, it's been a really good election cycle. A bit short. Um, I, I've enjoyed the brevity, but it might have been a little short. But you know, what's done is done. I, I I do appreciate people being much more cordial. I think we had a lot of more toxicity last year, and it's it's good to see that not as prevalent this year amongst the candidates. So. Good stuff, guys. Um, thanks for everyone being on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Zell, for not taking it too personally when we heckle the hell out of you. But, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you got to have a whipping boy, right? So um, with that said, you know, thanks for listening, guys. And, uh, you know, get out there and vote. It's, it's starting in three days. Go on the website. And make sure you, you fill out your entire, your, your entire candidate list. Make sure, you know, if you want someone in, Put them as number one. I mean, like I said, it's with the way the voting system works, the, the person most likely for your vote to count for is the one in that number one slot. So make sure you get that there and then make everyone else can, you know, fall in the line that you want. So get out there and vote. Uh, with that said, we're going to call Biomass episode 64 to a close.